Hi, this is Kathy with Cumetry, and I'm going to take you through an inside look on one of our JIRA add-ons. It's called Cumetry Analytics. Now, the Cumetry Analytics add-on is fully equipped with various reports for JIRA projects, and with these reports, QA teams are going to get total visibility with their testing quality. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into the video. Um, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create and also customize beautiful reports such as these for your testing data. So before you can start creating any of these reports, there's a few prerequisites you're going to have to fulfill. The first is to have a license for Cumetry Test Management for JIRA. Now, on top of having that license for QTM for J, you'll also need to install the Cumetry Analytics add-on from the Atlassian Marketplace. So this is what it's going to look like in the Atlassian Marketplace. You basically would search for Cumetry Analytics and once you enter this page, you'll be able to go either try it for free or you can also buy the add-on. Now the third thing you'll need also is test data. So the test data would consist of test cases, also stories and test runs. This way you can be able to generate the reports that you need for your project. All right, so with all those prerequisites, let's get into creating a dashboard. In the case you haven't created a dashboard yet, just go ahead to the dashboard section on your JIRA toolbar, go to manage dashboards, and in here you're going to see the currently favorited dashboards. Um, I've already favorited, favorited our Fit Tracker dashboard, which is the example dashboard I'm going to be walking you through, but in this case, let's try creating a new dashboard. And in here is where you would enter the name of your dashboard, a description, um, the dashboard that you want to start from, preferably would be from a blank dashboard, but in the case you want to reuse a previously made dashboard, you have the choice to select any of these and start from there. If you have this star filled in like it is right now, then you will be able to favorite this dashboard. So if you wanted to unfavorite it, just click on it, refavorite, click it again. Um, this way, it will be able to show up inside of your dashboard's drop-down menu. Now, with your favorite dashboard set in place, you can also share the dashboards. So, if you choose to uh, share this dashboard with other people, because by default, when you create a dashboard, it will be set to private, you have the option to be able to choose any category of a group that you want to share this dashboard with. So. In the case you want to share it with a group um, called administrators, or say if I wanted to, you know, share across my Fit Tracker project uh, teammates, I can also add them in. You also have the option to share to any a logged in user, or also make this dashboard public. Now, once you choose the category that you want to share your dashboard with, just click Add, and the permissions will be shared over here. And once you're done setting up all these different parameters for your dashboard. Then you can go ahead and hit create. This will help you save a new dashboard. Now in this video, I'm actually going to be walking you through an existing dashboard we have already for our Fit Tracker project. So in the Fit Tracker dashboard, this is where we're going to find reports that we've already um, customized based on different categories of data and also the different views we have available inside of Cumetry Analytics. Now, if you wanted to add a new report, just go click Add Gadget. And in this menu, you're going to find a test run summary gadget. And this one is specific to the Cumetry Analytics application or add-on. So let's go ahead and click Add Gadget and see what happens. Now we have our test run summary gadget loaded. And this is where we would customize our reports based on three different factors. Now, the first factor being the save filters. This is where if you've saved any JQL queries earlier on, you can select the filter by which you want your data to show. So let's choose the Fit Tracker board. And for example, the second parameter would be which category you want to group your report by. So we have different data categories such as assignee, platform, test run, story test scenario, component, sprint, label, and version. So I'll go over each one of these later on to show you an example. And the last factor we have for customizing our report is what view you want to see your report in. So we have different views such as um, the tabular view, 
horizontal and vertical bar charts and we also have line and area charts and let's kind of go over the different categories in which we can organize our reports by so just to know all of these different reports that we use the test run gadget for is um, for test case execution results and all of these test case execution results are organized by a certain category in this case the first category is by assignee so for example, this graph is showing the assignees of the test cases which are associated with the test runs that we have under the filter we had chosen for this dashboard. So you'll see here that we have all of our different assignees or the owners of our test cases. And you can also see what kind of test case um, execution statuses that they have received as a result of their testing. Um, for each of these graphical representation graphs, you can also turn off and turn on the different statuses to get a more um, exact view of how many test cases are within each of the statuses. Right? So with all of them together though, you can view to see how many total of the test cases are assigned to each of these um, owners. Now let's say that for our Fit Tracker example project that I am a QA manager and using this graph, I will be able to track the progress of all the test case executions that have been performed so far to decide whether my deadlines for this uh, testing is going to be met. Using this report, I can also get early signs of my build quality um, using the different statuses. So for example, I will be able to decide whether or not I would be able to complete the regression testing in time. And in terms of me as a QA manager seeing all of the test cases at once for all the different test owners, I can also view who in my team will need more help with testing. So say if one of my team members is facing a lot of failure on their test cases, I can figure out whether I need to re-delegate these test cases amongst my team. So the next report type you can see is test case execution result by platform. Now on the platform graph, you'll be able to see on which platforms you had executed your test cases. So be it that you executed on Windows, Mac OS, say if you had it on mobile for iOS and Android, or maybe even on web for Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox. Based on these different platforms, you can see how the executions of your test cases are doing. Now as a QA manager, I can also figure out whether um, it's appropriate to release a build based on the performance of my testing on a certain platform. So let's say for Mozilla Firefox, I think most of my test cases are passing. Um, in that case, I feel ready to release that build on Mozilla Firefox. But on the other ones, it's not doing so well in terms of the overall number of my test cases. And for that reason, I'll make the executive decision to not release this build for those platforms quite yet. When it comes to viewing your data by sprint, you will be able to see your test case executions from sprint to sprint. And through each sprint, you can basically see how much the sprint has been tested and whether or not the sprint is ready to be closed. So at the same time, you can also compare the quantity of the tests for each of the sprints and be able to see if the testing quality has been improving or even degrading um, from sprint to sprint. If the quality of your testing has been degrading, then maybe it will be time to think about rescoping the test runs to reduce the velocity of testing within each of the sprints. So this is a good way for our QA managers to be able to figure out whether or not they're overloading the testing for each of the sprints. So the same thing goes with our data based on version to version testing. You'll be able to kind of track the testing quality that you have within your regression testing. And then this way, you can also see if there's improvement in the builds uh, between each of the versions. So as a QA manager, then I can basically track to see the health of all of my testing from version to version of my product. Okay, so the next category that we can view our results by is by test run. So this test run um, report is basically recorded in a tabular view and it's for the issues with the JIRA issue type test run. Now this shows you a detailed status report of all of the different test case executions you've performed. 
This allows you to quickly view the test runs and also the test cases that are passed or need extra work. And also because these drill down have links to the specific test runs which are associated with the specific status, you'll be able to view the relevant issues that are associated through this chart. At the bottom of each drill down, I get to see a total number of the issues associated with each status. And at the very bottom right, you'll also see a total number of the test cases that are associated with the test runs in this drill down. Now in the chart with the stories, this is basically the same thing as the test run one, except this time the information is categorized by the stories that are created for this project. And you'll be able to see the execution statuses for each of the test cases inside of these associated stories. And of course, if we move to the test scenario chart, we'll be able to view the same kind of information, except it will be traced based on the test scenarios that were created for your project. For our component tables, we're able to view our information by each of the components that we have labeled our test cases by. So based on the execution statuses that each of the test cases have received, you'll be able to see a cumulative count of all of the different execution statuses, and then you'll be able to plot data points based on the different components that we have for the test cases. And if in the case you also have a label to identify your test case by, we can also create a table um, that will categorize the quantities of the test case executions here. Now if you ever wanted to change the view or even the category of the information you'd like to see for each gadget, then you can just go on to the three dots that are on the top right of a gadget and just click edit. And in this way you can just basically go back to customizing your data. Say if you wanted to um, create a vertical bar chart for this um, information instead of having a horizontal one, you can just go ahead and change that and your gadget will update accordingly. At the same time, if you wanted to view your gadgets in a different layout, um, we also are able to do that through this button, Edit Layout. So in the case you want to view a full screen page of each of the charts, then you can click the first button. This is where you would separate into two different columns of um, charts, and then if you wanted to separate into three columns, you are free to do so. In addition to that, if you wish to either share or delete your dashboard, you can do so by selecting the different options that we have on this drop-down menu. So this wraps up the overview of our Cumetry Analytics dashboard feature with the Test Run Summary gadget. I hope you learned a lot today about how to create beautiful reports on our dashboards and thank you for joining me here in this Cumetry video and happy testing guys!